So before the break, we asked what does Alex Salmond want to keep if Scotland votes for independence? And the answer is all three. Yeah, the Doctor Who thing is just really a funny way of saying he wants to keep the BBC as well. Anyway, welcome back to The Right Stuff, live on Channel 5 with uh, Katie Hopkins, Jeremy Edwards and Ronnie Ancona. We'll have the rest of the headlines for you from today's newspapers very shortly. But first, as Alex Salmond unveiled his blueprint for an independent Scotland, we want to know what you think. 0207 173 5555. Get on the line and tell us what you make of it. The 670-page document outlined how Scotland would look. No tax rises, a new army a higher state pension, and he's even named a date for Independence Day, should Scots vote yes next September, the 24th of March, 2016. And despite that possibility being remote just a few years ago, the polls are tightening. The latest from the Sunday Times showed the no vote leading by just 9% down into single figures now, with 15% of Scots still undecided. So it's anyone's for the taking. What's interesting here, though, is a poll that was done recently in England, and it showed that one in three English people are very happy to see Scotland cut away, right? Which is a greater proportion than the one in five Scots who are in favour. Now, you see, I, that, I think that tells you something. I think that what that says is, it's, it's a bit like a couple, isn't it? And one of the couple is saying, you know, I think I might be leaving you. I, th I think I'm going to walk out. I don't want to be with you anymore. And the other one says, fine, go on then. I can, I can get by without you. you buy, fine, leave, I don't care. That, that seems to me to be the psychological dynamic that's beginning to emerge in this strange situation. But the weird thing is, Richard, the one that said, well, you know, I think I might be leaving you, I think it's time we mm. called it a day. Just, I'm just imagining this situation. <laughs> can you tell? Um, then also says, but also, I'm going to leave you and I'm going to take the house, the car, yeah. our yeah. dog... Oh, I'm going to take all the best bits that I like. Your queen, so your Scotland's money, the woman Doctor in Who. Yes, yes. The, Scotland is the woman, very much, especially if you look at Salmon. I don't think he's got a pet um, himself. <laughs> so, certainly. Let's not, let's not get personal. Let's not get personal. Let's, let's, let's keep it on the issues. Ronnie, uh, you were yes, brought up in Scotland. I was brought up in Scotland. Which, which part? Um, the west coast of Scotland, near Glasgow, okay. in Troon, it, Troon. Which, is a, which is a town that has got about eight golf courses, and basically we were the only family who didn't play golf, so we were <laughs> golfless. We were socially ostracised. Okay. They don't have golf in their life. Keep away from the golfless people. <laughs> um, what do you think? What do I think? Well, no, do you know what? I haven't been through this, but from an emotive point of view, yeah. I am very oh. against it. I really am. I mean, there's been a huge history of the Union since it was 1603 when James VI became James I of yep. the UK, and then they had the Acts of Union pretty much 100 years later. Mm. And I, I just... I think it's... I slightly agree with Katie on this. I think if you're going to do it, and if he's going to do it, mm. do it, but do it properly, mm. you know. But I feel that it's a little bit taking of this and leaving of this and, and sort of slightly cherry-picking the, Boris, the, bit, Boris, the Johnson, bits. Boris Johnson wrote a very interesting piece about this, and as usual with Boris, it was quite colourful and it was full of analogies and, you know, and comparisons. But in a sense, and I, I agree with him, he, he said, we're looking at what could be a very messy divorce. We all know couples, mm -hmm. don't we, who, who talk grandly about getting divorced, they've had enough, and then when it actually happens, they bitterly regret what they've done. Because unpicking, particularly a long marriage, a complex marriage, mm -hmm. with all the ties mm -hmm. that bind and all the seals that, that sentiment provides, it can be very, very messy. And if Scotland does say yes, uh, to this. C can you imagine the rows that are going to go on? I mean, let's just start with one point, the Bank of England. It's the Bank of England, yeah? And he wants to keep it, and he wants to keep sterling. Well, what's, why would the Bank of England say, yeah we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll carry on basically being your first bank of refusal, when you've, you're a separate country? We wouldn't, yeah. we wouldn't do that for France or Belgium or Luxembourg. Why would we do it for Scotland? What, what do you think about that? I don't know. I mean, to me, it, yeah, I'm one of these uh, British or English people, I suppose, doesn't quite understand it in that, you see, I'm perfectly happy. I don't understand. There has always been a slight ill feeling, I felt, anyway, from Scottish people towards English people. And there's been this, this hence this uh, sort of want for independence. And it, to me, I've never got it. So, therefore, I've always been of the opinion, well, OK, if, if you're really that unhappy, because it really doesn't... Because I, I love Scotland and Scottish yeah. people. So it doesn't, I don't understand it. I'm like, well, if it's making you unhappy, then please go. Do you know what I mean? I want you to yes, be happy. Yes. But then, if you look at it this way. If they vote and they don't leave, well, at least they can put the matter to bed then, can't you? Because then you can say, look on the positive side, if it doesn't happen, you can say, OK, well, just to, to sort of silence the people who are complaining and They've just say, well, shout. actually, you've They've had, had it shout. now. We've given yeah. the opportunity, so let's, can we just get on with it now? Can we all actually now work as one team and stop 
Oh, about? they're very... I mean, having been educated in Scotland, there's a real nationalistic fervour. I mean, I had English blood, and boy, you know, are you... You're not made to forget that. Yeah. You know, the English kids who were in Scottish schools, it was just a little comprehensive used to be bullied, you know, and there, and, and, and is there, there is, is a... Is there is a... different, though, from, say, the antipathy that does exist between, say, Liverpool and Manchester? But it's not real. It's a sort of game, or, uh, or Newcastle and Sunderland. Yes, I mean, but you, I you get these rivalries I, all over I the country. Do, it doesn't mean you split up. I do, I personally feel... I'm probably going to be shout down a, a lot about this, but I feel quite sad, for example, when Scotland's knocked out of the World Cup and England's yes. still playing. And, and a lot of Scottish football fans would rather see Paraguay or somebody yeah, go I, through. Yeah, that upsets and me. I, and and I, yeah, and I think too. it's. I think it's. I also think it's a little silly in these rather recessive days, you know, where, where it's financially problematic but for everything to split but just up. Just back to your, your first point, though. Why is it? Do we think that on the whole the negativity flows from Scotland to us? I mean, for example, when England got knocked out of the qualifying rounds for the World Cup in 1970, I think it was. No, 1974. Uh, and Scotland qualified. Yeah. Uh, and for the first time I became aware of a Scottish player called Archie Gemmell. And he became my hero. And I really wanted Scotland to, I really wanted Scotland to do well. And Andy Murray. And I really want him to win Wimbledon. Yeah, I want yeah. him, and yet, I know he's backed away from it now, but he did say that oh, he, yeah, he, he couldn't much, possibly that, that support frustrated an English me, yeah. team. Why is it... Highland why is, clearances. Why does it flow that way? The Highland clearances. Yeah, but that's hundreds of years ago. Well, there's been a lot of... I think there was a lot of oppression towards... I mean, and it sits heavy with... You know, there was a lot of... If you look that's into why the, I think. That's why I reiterate my point. That this is why, if there is that ill feeling, this is why I think it's important to say, OK, we'll give you the, the, the decision, make the decision, but if, if you don't go that... If you want to go be independent, be independent, but if you don't, then can we please... Just put Katie, it, made I just, very, uh, you made a very good point when, uh, earlier on uh, when you said you can't cherry-pick. If you're going to be independent and if you're going to be a foreign yeah, country, I, then you have to let all those... So what about the BBC? I mean, would we have to call it the EWNI, the English, Welsh and Northern Ireland Corporation? Well, I think for me, you just call it the SODOFF. You know, for me, I really believe that <laughs> we shouldn't be giving them the choice to be independent. We are governed by Europe. All of our rules, all of our politics are yes. governed by Europe. Did we ever say, if you're me and you're 38, I know, unbelievable, that we... Uh, did I ever get a choice in being part of Europe? No. Have I had one in 38 years? No. And all of a sudden, salmon asks for something, we give it to them on a plate. Now, we pay £40 billion, or they spend... £40 billion on their public services, things like schools, health centres, blah, 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 blah. They bring in £27 billion from their taxes. So a little problem there that they might be able to spot is that we're actually subsidising a whole bunch of their spending. And if they are going to be independent, you crack on Scotland because you're going to find it a lot more expensive to live where you live. And you get all these other compl complications, which I don't think have been... I mean, it's a very thick document, uh, and I haven't been able to go through it all. But what about the diplomatic service? I mean, at the moment, the, the British Diplomatic Corps represents the UK's interests here and abroad. If Scotland becomes a foreign country, what's going to happen? I mean, they can't expect us to represent them in the diplomatic area. Are they what? going to open their own embassies around it the world? Crazy. Build a you know what? I think actually, I, there is a good point, actually, that the independence of Scotland these days would means a lot different than it would, say, 34 years ago, because Europe has such a, mm. is such a power over mm. us. Do you know what I mean? Yes. It, it, we're it, under an it's had a, we're under a, an umbrella anyway, and so. Given the given the point, that we'll have to move this on in a second. We'll take some calls after the break. But the point you made about the subsidy that, that we do give and have for, for, yeah. for centuries given Scotland, you know, we, we help them financially. Um, what have we done wrong? What about our royal Richard just seen? What about what? <laughs> <laughs> it's such a great. No, it's really important because that's exactly the line they'll come back with every time. Is what about the oil? Well, that would have to be negotiated and, and, and some kind of fair settlement. But 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 what have we done wrong? I mean, as you say, we we, we give them our money. Um, our taxpayer, our English taxpayers' money okay, goes north of the border. Can I just, can I, can I, can I, can I just <laughs> say something in support of the Scots, though? Yes. I oh, I love the Scots. Up, Don't get me wrong. I was, I, when I was growing up, you know, there used to be, it, you know, the, the cold winters there were phenomenal, and you'd have these sort of, oh, sort of very cold Scottish pensioners having terrible problems with their fuel problems and their fuel bills and everything, and it was pretty much ignored. When they had a big freeze down in, down south, <laughs> suddenly there's a big thing. <laughs> Yeah. about English pensioners being a problem. The Scots have been having, having that for years. I just want to put the alternative oh, side no, to this. That's perfectly and okay. they, felt very, no uh, they felt very disenfranchised.
yes. in Scotland, and if it was an English problem, suddenly, suddenly it sort of drew attention. OK, well, look, we're, we're going to carry this on after the break. I mean, I have to say, I, I was based in Carlisle for four years at Radio Carlisle. I was at Radio Carlisle, as you heard earlier. Um, and then Border Television, and being Border Television, it covered the Scottish borders. I loved my storytelling in Scotland. I loved the Scottish people. I loved the people in the borders. And I never felt a foreigner there. I never felt like I was an outsider and I was there on their tolerance. I just felt it was another part of my country, you know. Uh, but it's clear that there is a proportion of people in Scotland who don't think that way. Will they be the majority uh, in ten months' time? That's what the panel thinks. After the break, it's your turn. Your thoughts on Scottish independence. What would it mean, whether you're a Scottish person or not? It would be lovely to hear from you. 0207 173 5555. Your call's on the other side of the break. According to the Scottish Sunday Express, how many voters would leave Scotland if it became independent? 6,400, 64,000 or 640,000? Find out after the ads. So according to the Scottish Sunday Express, how many voters would leave Scotland if it became independent? And the answer is 640,000. I think that would qualify as a migration. Yeah, apparently 640,000 Scottish voters say that they would come south if the country votes for independence. That's <laughs> two-thirds of a million. Incredible. 16% of the electorate. Anyway, welcome back to Wednesday's show with Katie Hopkins, Jeremy Edwards and Ronnie Ancona, who will have the rest of the headlines from the papers for you next, including calls for an army of good Samaritans. Keep an eye on the elderly this winter. And Prince William is crowned king of karaoke. We have got a great clip of him, a wonderful clip of Prince William, with uh, Bon Jovi and Taylor Swift. Wonderful. But first, these thoughts on Scottish independence, now that Alex Salmond has published the roadmap for a split from the UK. 0207 173 5555 is the number, if you've got a, a, an opinion on that, and you have. Um, OK, before the break, uh, Katie said, fine, go, but don't cherry-pick, don't keep the good bits. Um, Jeremy, you, you said, well, in fact, during the break, you said, uh, well, at least if they do split away, we can actually, we don't have to put the clocks back anymore in the oh, autumn. Because we do that for Scotland. I know we do. We do that for Scotland. Yeah. No, it's a big um, wrench. You know, and I suppose the extreme north of England, but, you know, it's a pain in the neck down there. But we do it. We, we go along with it. And, Ronnie, you just said basically a divorce between uh, Scotland and England would make you very sad. Well, I've just changed my mind in the break, and I've decided that... <laughs> you I've decided, it. I've decided yes. not that I'm fickle, that I've <laughs> decided that we should... that you should... I think we should have King Richard of, <laughs> of Maidley. My armies King are gathering... Uh, uh, my fourth. armies are gathering in the north as we speak. <laughs> Obviously, we need a coup. And I think you should, we should separate it not just from Scotland to England, but into various English regions. And you could yes. be the King of Carlisle. King of Carlisle. But you'd have to, to, you'd have to have your R RP back. Yes, I, uh, yes, I would. I'd talk like that. Uh, Richard IV. All right, Kirsty. Uh, we've had millions of calls on this. Uh, we have. Up, we're going to start with Kirsty on line two. Another Kirsty. <laughs> Good morning, Kirsty. Good morning. Where are you calling from, Kirsty? Um, I'm calling from Inverness, Scotland. Okay, know it well. Love it. Um, what do you want to say about this? Um, I think it's a really exciting prospect that at last we're getting the chance to vote because it's been talked about for such a long time. And how would you vote? Um, I would, I've always thought that I would vote yes for Scottish independence. Um, I didn't need to see any details from the white paper. It's what I believe is right for the country. And have you always thought that? Um, yes, yeah, for most of my adult life, since Alex Salmond has been kind of harping on about it, I've always believed that it would be a good idea. And can I ask you, to be really honest, to be really straight, are you a bit or a lot anti-English? Do you not like us very much? No, absolutely not, no. Um, the street that I live in, actually, um, there's a lot of English people stay here. I went to school with English people. Um, I haven't spent much time in England, but I absolutely do not have a problem with um, England or English people. That's, that's nothing to do with it. I what I to... think is, it wasn't very democratic in the last election that Conservatives run our country when we didn't, in fact, vote them in. That's one of the problems I have with politics. OK. What about the, 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 the... One of the main points that's come out, not just in this discussion, but in many discussions, is that currently, and this would stop if, you, if, your, if your vote was in the majority, currently we send millions of pounds north of the border to subsidise life in Scotland. That would stop. Does that not bother you? I understand what you're saying, but I also think that in politics you can spend numbers in any way that you want, depending True. on who's telling us. Yep. Um, and I think that with revenue from oil and then maybe... Um, 
we could start off industry again that has really been closed down in the, since I've been an adult. Okay. Um, we don't have industry, whether it's Scotland, England, basically Britain has closed down a lot of its industries, and I think that there would be a chance there for us to develop these things. All right, last question, then I'm going to take uh, some more calls. Um, what would be to you the most, the most important thing about becoming independent? What, what, is, the, what is the bottom line for you? Um, well, it, it's just everything, really, that we can make decisions that are good for Scotland. I believe a lot of the decisions... I know we have a devolved parliament, but I believe that, that a lot of the decisions um, are beneficial, maybe not just to England, but London. And Scotland has very different needs, and I think that they need to be looked at and taken into consideration more, which they're not at the moment. All right, Kirsty, you make your points very eloquently, but you're shaking your head, Katie. Yeah, I just find it, you know, they've got a devolved parliament already, for goodness sake. The white paper that's been laid out that people are buying into is just a long list of free childcare, 30 hours of free childcare. Um, we're going to cut corporation tax. We're going to scrap the bedroom tax. Just a long for, list of wishes for. that aren't going to happen because they can't afford them. And the, and the other, the other point is, we're going to come take another call now. That most of the proposals mm. in the white paper they could do now under Scott, um, with the Scottish Assembly. They, they don't could. need independence to do it. Uh, Kirsty, we have Leanne on line three. Leanne, yes. Hello, Leanne. Hi, uh, Good morning. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Glasgow. From Glasgow. All yes. right. Uh, what's your take on this? Um, I was heavily brought course. up um, for Scotland to be independent, SNP by both parents, but personally, um, my family would probably kill me, but I think no. Why? Um, too many variables. They're wanting to keep the pound, they're wanting to keep all the good bits that make, um, I think, I'm proud to be British, mm -hmm. and they want, but they, they want to be, they want to be separate. I just I don't under, understand why they need to be separate when um, we've got so much good things going on in Scotland as it is. Yes. Um, um, do I you... mean, we we started off with the free, you know, prescriptions, and I mean, is that going to continue if we were to become independent? Do you consider yourself Scottish first and British second, or British first and Scottish um, second? I would still consider myself Scottish first simply because that's where I was born. Okay. But. I would say, if somebody said, where you're from, you'd, you'd obviously say, well, I'm from Scotland, but I'm British. Right. When you're, when you're typing forms, like my child's nursery form, you put on it, what are they? You put British. Sometimes, when, over the years, when one's read correspondence in the newspapers from people in Scotland who are pushing for independence, and I'm not, I'm not branding all of these letters in this way, but quite often you see an undercurrent of real dislike for the English, uh, almost contempt for the English. Uh -huh. Where, now, you live in Glasgow, you live in Scotland, you're, you are Scottish. Where do you think that comes from? Do you think it comes from the roots of history, or is it something to do with the way we are today? I, I think it's a bit of both. Um, I lived in London for seven years. Yeah. Um, and... The remarks I got from my English work colleagues were shocking. Um, I think if I had been from a different ethnic minority, I would have got them done for being racist. Right. Um, right. Very interesting. Um, Leanne, but, Leanne but, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll have to call it there, Leanne. Thank you. Uh, Kirsty, one more. We'll take Adrian on line one. Adrian, again, where are you calling from, please? I'm in Carmarthenshire in Wales, and I would move to Scotland in a heartbeat if they get full devolution, and I will do that yeah. because Salmond is actually following in um, an ancestor of mine's footsteps, um, Lord Douglas, who actually rang Scotland for King James um, for some time and then lost everything. Um, he put everything on the line and then lost it because he refused to put up the taxes. Now, the fact is I've actually provided them with a, a set of welfare benefit and pension reforms, mm -hmm. which they are and uh, have been considering. And those basically allow people to get much better uh, welfare uh, and, and pensions, okay. uh, independent of the taxpayer. And it basically means that the people, everyone in Scotland will be much, much, much better financially off if Scotland get their full devolution, because uh, well, we can't yeah, have that well, the yeah, way that things yeah, are... Yes, Adrian, that's, that's true, based on what's being proposed and what's being promised, but it has to be paid for, and that was the... Uh, almost every side yesterday, almost every side yesterday said, yeah, but where's, where's the beef? Hang on, how, how, how is this going to be financed? I mean, anybody can, can promise tax cuts, higher pensions, 
better childcare. We can, we can say anything like that, but we have, to, we have to do the math. We have to show the working, and that wasn't there. Uh, but anyway, may, maybe they'll come out with that in a few I, months' I think time. We shouldn't Very forget that uh, Europe's in a lot of trouble at the moment. And yeah. Scotland, if it gets into the moment, would be highly reliant on, on Europe. All and right. We're in a lot of trouble. We have to kill the discussion there now. After the break, it's uh, Ronnie kicking us off with the papers review. I'm sure there'll be something about independence in that. Also, calls to stop patients smoking outside hospitals and staff to stop smoking outside hospitals. And the gravedigger who lost his job just for smiling in a photograph. It's, it's a really awful story. No, it's a really bad story, this. Uh, all that and more in a couple of minutes. <laughs>